Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I'm going to show you how to run a native Super Mario 64 port on the RG351P. Now, if you've seen my videos before, I did a similar thing for the RG350 devices, but this one's even better. This port has a patch that allows you to play the game in 60 frames per second, and you just have to see it to believe it. It's really kind of amazing. Now unfortunately, the way I record these videos, they're only in 30 frames per second, so you can't see how awesome it looks, so I just encourage you to try it out yourself. And additionally in this video, I'm going to compare different versions of Super Mario 64 so that you can get a feel for how this one plays on the RG351P compared to other versions. I'm really excited about this one, so without any further delay, let's dive into it. So as always, linked below, I have a written guide, and that's going to have everything you need. The first thing you need to do is you need to get your own copy of Super Mario 64, and you want it to be in the Z64 format, not the N64 format, and then you're going to want to rename it to the names that I have listed here below. So for example, I have the US version of the game, so I'm going to change it to baserom.us.z64. After you've done that, we're going to go to a special page that will allow us to build the port ourselves using this cool Google app. So just go ahead and click on the link here, and it'll pull up this document. So this page looks a little confusing, but it's actually very simple. All you have to do is run two different scripts. For the first step, all you have to do is hit the play button, and then just confirm it. And then let it just run through its thing. It's going to make all the binaries you need in order to build this port. Okay, once that's done, you go ahead and hit that folder button on the left and then refresh and you'll see this 351 elect port folder there. That's where you're going to drag your own file over there. It's going to warn you and say it's going to delete it after you do this, just hit OK. Next, you're going to go to the second window full of code and you're going to want to do two different things. The first one says you need to take away that hashtag in order to make it 60 frames per second. So go ahead and just delete that hashtag. And then depending on whether or not you're using 351 elect or ArcOS, go ahead and delete whatever hashtag you're using. I'm using ArcOS, so I deleted that one. After that, all you have to do is hit play again. And this script will take about five minutes to go through everything. Okay, once it's done, go ahead and hit that refresh button on the folders again. And there it is, you're gonna have an ArcOS or 351 elect zip folder. Go ahead and just download that zip file. And open it up and you'll see two files inside. One will be the folder called SM64, and the next one will be a shell script and it'll say sm64.sh. Move those over onto your computer and you can get rid of these other files now. Now this is totally optional, but if you want to change this file name to say something that says Super Mario 64, you can change it there. This is what's going to show up on your actual device when you have it there. So if you wanted to say SM64, you're good to go. If you want to change it, go ahead and change it now. While you're here, go down to the bottom of the guide and I have the box art and video available as well. So all you have to do is just download this link and then open up this assets zip file. And then there you go, you have a PNG as well as an MP4. And all you have to do is just drag those over to your computer as well. And if you renamed your SH file, you're gonna have to go and rename these files as well. That way they're all matching. And you can see here, it's just the plain box art as well as the video you would get from scraping it. The issue is because we're gonna put the files into the ports folder of your SD card, they're gonna show up as computer games, which means you won't be able to scrape them correctly. So it's easier just to drag them in yourself. So next, put in your SD card, either from ArcOS or 351 elect, and then go to the ports folder. And then all you have to do is actually just drag over the folder and then the SH file. And once they're copied over, you've basically installed the game at this point. But let me show you how to add the box art in the videos as well. All you have to do is go up to the images folder and then drag your box art in. And then do the same thing with the videos folder. Just drag the video file in. That's it, you're good to go. At this point, all you have to do is eject your disc and then plug it back into your device. So here we are in Arc OS here. I'm just going to navigate to the port section on my device, and then I'm going to scroll down to Super Mario 64. 
there it is. You can just hit the A button and it boots right up. Now bear in mind, this game runs natively, which means there's no menu, it's going to run exactly like if you were just putting a Nintendo 64 cartridge into your device. So no fancy features or anything else other than the 60 frames per second patch. I don't know what it is with me and Super Mario 64, but I've been on a quest to find the best way to play this game. And as you can see here, I've tried it on various platforms. On the top left, you see the RG280V, which also runs a Super Mario 64 port, just like on the RG350 device. And then on the top right, I have Mario 3D All-Stars from the Nintendo Switch, so a retail game. And then on the PS Vita, I actually figured out how to do Nintendo 64 emulation pretty well, so I'll show you that as well. And then finally, obviously, the RG351P. So starting with the 280V here, now this is just kind of a really neat novelty here just for the fact that you can play this game flawlessly on such a tiny little device. Now obviously this does not have any analog sticks so it's actually pretty hard to control but it is just kind of fun to play it on this little thing here. The resolution's pretty low, it's 320 by 240 but still pretty fun. So the Nintendo Switch version has been out for a couple months already, and it looks really great. I would expect nothing less from a game that Nintendo themselves ported over. The graphics are nice and crisp, the controls feel really good, it has the original camera which is a little bit unfortunate, but they redid all the assets, so for example you can see the numbers and everything look really really sharp on this. Now the PS Vita was a big surprise for me because I had already heard many times that Nintendo 64 emulation was terrible on this device. Well two hours after I made my Vita video, they dropped a new one and it runs beautifully and it looks so nice and crisp on this OLED display. You can see here, everything looks just so sharp and beautiful. Not every Nintendo 64 game plays very well, but Mario 64 plays awesome on the PS Vita. And finally, the star of the show of today's video, this is the RG351P version. Now, like I mentioned before, you can't see the 60 frames per second on this, but it is just beautiful on this thing. It looks just surreal how awesome it is. You have to see it to believe it. And unfortunately, I filmed everything in 30 frames per second, so I can't show it to you here, but it is just awesome. Now, one of the things that kind of sucks about this is that it has the original camera on it and you can't change anything about it. So it's just a little bit awkward. It's just how the camera used to be in the 90s. You know, it was really Really groundbreaking at the time, but by today's standards it feels just a little bit limited. And to be fair, some of the coloring on this is not great. It's kind of washed out, the whites are really white, Mario looks kind of pale and stuff, but honestly just the sheer joy of playing it at 60 frames per second and in such a smooth frame rate, it just feels really awesome and I really do think it's worth your time to try this one out. Now one thing to bear in mind, the controls are hard coded into this port for now, which means that you have to use the A button to jump and the B button to roll. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I think it could be mapped to a better place on the face buttons. Now in order to close out the game, all you have to do is hit select and start at the same time. Alright everyone, that's it for this video, real short and quick here. I just wanted to show you how to install this on your RG351P and be able to play it at 60 frames per second. I think this is a really neat project to take your own copy of Mario 64, port it over for the RG351P for your own personal use, and then just have at it. Okay, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!